Hello, visitor. We are the Slylandro. I am content to hover, a Slylandro speaker. Your presence here fills us with excitement. We have gotten so few visitors over these many drawn. We hope you can stay to talk with us for a time. Oh, this is terribly exciting! We will be happy to tell you about ourselves if you will please, please do the same. You see, we Slylandro have been extremely interested in learning about the galaxy, but our physique makes us incapable of leaving our gas giant home. Therefore, we are totally reliant on our infrequent visitors to keep us informed about events outside this planetary system. And visitors usually only show up every few drawing. We hope that our newly deployed exploration probe fleet will not only gather information for us, but inform other races of our presence here as well. The drone is our primary unit of time. It lasts for an interval equivalent to 4 million rotations of our planet. A drone is subdivided into 2,000 dronasa. Now please, our turn! Will you tell us about yourselves? Yes, that seems to be the pattern. Just about everyone who comes by here says they developed on a world a lot like that. As far as we know, we're the only sentient species who's ever evolved in the atmosphere of a gas giant. Of course, from what we know, most travelers like yourselves don't have much interest in gas giants. So maybe there are others like us, Thylandro, out there somewhere. That must be great, to leave your planet and roam the stars. You don't know how monotonous living on a gas giant for three or four drawn can be. Clouds, clouds, clouds. Wind, lightning, clouds, clouds, clouds. That's it. We know a lot about clouds. If you've got any cloud questions, ask us. We have over 800 different symbolic references just to describe them. Most of the time, when we aren't eating, we hover around and talk about what the clouds look like. Of course, the only things we know about are clouds, food, and other Slylandro. So generally, that's what we think the clouds look like. The Earth one? The long brownish guys from the Liu with all the eyes and arms? They used to come visit us regularly about three drones ago. They told us about all the interesting things they found from their scouting missions. They were really nice. Why do you fight with them? But the Urquan were such good guys. They had lots of interesting things to tell us about, and they never got impatient with our questions. Hmm. Well, I guess a lot can happen to a species in tree drawn like turning green and evil. Oh! Then you should go check out a planet orbiting a blue star not too far from here. I think there is another blue star right next to it. We can't describe exactly where it is, but the people who told us about it, the Urquan I think, said that it was one of the rarest worlds in space, and that as far as they knew, there were only ten of these planets in this part of the galaxy. Okay, but please, can we talk about you some more later? Oh my, I forgot. You creatures see in the visual range and can see our, well, our, uh, well, uh, we can't see them. Uh, <clears throat> what I mean to say is uh, they are, well, well, we use them when the male and the female, uh, <clears throat> oh look. I'd rather if you didn't ask about them, okay? Especially not in front of Soul and Plummet. She's shy. Great. Now you've done it. Just look at Soul and Plummet. You've embarrassed her so badly that she can't even regulate her ballast. That's okay. Actually, your explicit questions have put Soul and Plummet in an unusual and intriguing mood. I will explore this change more fully when this conversation is over. We are the Slylandroid, a race of kind, 
curious, gas-bound people. Certainly, provided you share with us similar information. What would you like to know? Our planet, which we call Source, has no solid surface as yours likely does. Our world is the 500 kilometer band of atmosphere in which we can survive. Below this are the depths, a dark, hostile region, which grows increasingly darker and more hostile the farther one goes. A typical feat of courage for Slylandro juveniles is to sink far enough into the depths so that the juvenile's gas bag is almost ruptured by the pressure. The tissue scars left by the trip last many rotations and are thought to attract comely mates. Above our world is void. When we travel up too far into void, we grow giddy and behave inappropriately. We have an egalitarian society here. All are equal. Of course, that doesn't stop some people from being stupid fools or jerks. But on a world as huge as Source, where there are no barriers to restrict your travel, if someone is bothering you, you simply go somewhere else. As you might have guessed, we have no physical technology. In our long history, several of our people have tried to work with objects constructing weapons and other tools from the carcasses of dead beasts. But eventually, whatever it was they were building got too heavy and dragged them down to the depths. Since we possess no technology, we have no permanent way to record the passing of events. Instead, we use the history chants, long songs whose rhythms and patterns help prevent the introduction of error into the record. When the Shaggy Ones first arrived over 41 drawns ago, we had no words for aliens or ships, for stars or planets. Our skies are an opaque swirl of colors. We knew nothing of the universe outside Source. The Shaggy Ones taught us most of the new words, and after they departed, we remembered them for the many long drawn, until ships from the sentient milieu arrived. Our world, which we call Source, has been home to our species for many thousands of drawn. We evolved from simpler, unimodular beings who thrive in atmospheric convection cells. At first, we were little more than minus consumers who glided at the edge of wind walls, straining the air for small animacules. But even then, we were social creatures who invented language so that we could better cooperate when herding food into dense concentrations. There are many hundreds of species here in source, producers, consumers, hunters, and parasites, but so far, we are the only species here to achieve intelligence. My pleasure. Now let's talk about you and your peoples. You know, it's funny. We hadn't heard from the outside galaxy in a whole Janossa. And then, the Melmo may come by and sell us a probe. And just a few hundred locations later, you show up. Oh, and the probes? Right. Well, like we said, just a short time ago, a race called the Melmo may stopped by. They said they had acquired some information revealing our existence, and they wanted to study us, if we didn't mind. In fact, the Melomay said they would pay us for the right to do so. I guess they are biology nuts or something. Anyway, in exchange for our information, they gave us a probe vessel. Sure, if you are interested, in exchange for information about the life on Source, the Melnor may offer to give us a remote exploration probe. It would roam the galaxy gathering information and contacting alien races, and when it had filled its data storage units, it would return here and reveal to us everything it had learned. Our probes do not attack. They have only defensive capabilities. Offensive behavior is not part of the instructions we programmed into the probe. To do so would be reprehensible. 